Hi guys, welcome back. After my video from Denmark, I got some questions from some of you guys about traveling international with your dogs and things that I do keep in mind, stuff that I bring extra for the dog, so their traveling gear. And um, I thought, well, summer vacation is around the corner, I have to pack again anyways, so why not make a video about that? So in today's video, I'm going to cover that subject. And first of all, a little sort of a disclaimer. Um, this is how I work with my dogs when we are traveling international within Europe and stuff that I bring that's helpful to us that we use on vacation. It might depend on where you are living, where you are going, and what kind of property you are going to stay, whether you're camping, staying in a hotel, have booked a holiday home. So all those things a little bit depend on what you're going to bring. And it's always good to take an extra look on what your dog needs. So this is things that Ravi and Max need and it comes in handy for us. But it doesn't mean that it works for you as well. So just always keep that in mind. And in this video, I am not going to talk about hiking gear. So I am not including my first aid kit. Always take that, but it's not included in this list because it's in our backpacks. Um, stuff for hiking that we are using so i'm not including that in this video like a water bottle that we always have with us the water bottle from the dogs not in this bag but very important to always have that with you so uh, this is really related to traveling and staying in our case a vacation home and stuff that we bring for that so stay tuned if you are interested in this subject so first of all what i think is very important when you're traveling international with your dog and maybe even if you are just staying in your own country is to make sure that all your paperwork is fine and then i'm talking about paperwork in regards to your insurance for example that you do know that your insurance covers damage that your dog applies to the property that you have booked so that you do not have to worry about that one and when your dog breaks something you do not have to be afraid to go to the homeowner and say well this and that happened your insurance will cover it so make sure that you are aware of that what i always do is i always uh, before we leave are doing some research on google because i never know if i do have a solid internet connection where we are staying is uh, searching for the nearest information for the nearest vets so wherever we would like to stay and in around maybe i think maybe usually i take around 50 kilometers so then i have all the distance within reach when we are going out for hikes and everything so i have all the phone numbers with me when um in case it's needed that i can reach a vet and then i do not have to search for an internet connection out on the trail when there's an emergency or i just need a vet so i can check on that list see which net vet is the nearest by i can call them and if i do not have self uh, cell phone service at that moment i just go to the nearest town or ask somebody else if they have a service and if they can help us out but it's always very important to have those details with you so phone number maybe an email address in case it's not that such of an emergency but just just need some information so that's always good to have on hand and what's always very good to have on hand and it's needed when you are traveling uh, abroad with your dog is make sure that the vaccinations are okay and when we are traveling in europe there is only one vaccination that is really required for throughout all of europe and that's the rabies vaccination uh, basic shots um they are not required so it's up to you it's always good to make sure that your dog is protected well but we have their blood work checked every year so uh, we do not vaccinate them just on a, a yearly basis but we're just going to check that out and um, see if we have to take undertake action for that one if you are traveling through the south of europe make sure that you are uh, you're protecting your dog against the bugs that are living there because in the south of europe for example south of france spain they have those sort of sand flies and all different kind of flies that we have here in the netherlands and that need a little bit more protection so it's always good to check on that when you're traveling international and what's always good to check as well if your dog is protected well enough against ticks and ticks are everywhere and in uh, specific countries, they carry other diseases than in the country where you might live. So always important to check that out. And for traveling international, do not forget your dog's passport. All the details are in there, just the basic details. Um, just everything that you need to know a uh, chip number microchip also very important make sure that your dog is microchipped and that you have registered it because i see that a lot dogs are being found they are being microchipped but there are no details from the owner um are not um registered on that so nobody is ever able to call the dog's owner that they have found the dog so always make sure that you register the microchip of your dog there's all the details in there vaccination details um so if you were ever in need of a vet or you just lost your dog then you have all the details on hand that you might need 
And when you are traveling to another country, of course, it is always also very important to check beforehand what the rules are in regards to dogs. So in general, taking them into the country is every breed allowed, especially when you're having a sort of a high risk breed that they may call them nowadays. Make sure that your dog is allowed in the country where you would like to travel to. And even with those smaller dogs like we have, make sure that you know the rules in regards to leash, off leash, rules in forest, uh, rules on the beach, stuff like that. Uh, make sure that when you are booking an accommodation that you are making notice of your dogs in advance so not arriving there with a dog not telling the homeowner anything in advance because dogs aren't allowed everywhere so then you might up having a problem when you're arriving at a property where dogs are actually not allowed you think oh well i do it anyway just don't do it stick to the rules and make sure that we stay welcome and um make sure that you know what the rules are in regards to restaurants stores stuff like that so that you are well prepared i also noticed that in my video that i made about denmark and why you should not believe all the horror stories about that um, make sure that you just know how to behave well with the dog and what your dog is allowed to what your dog's not allowed to and today you have a lot less worries when you're out on vacation so that's a little bit about the paperwork. Now let's dive into the back. So like I mentioned before, this gear in here is just meant for traveling, staying at the property and not specifically for hiking or backpacking. I have that in my um, backpack, my day pack. So um, I can make another video about that if you're interested for that. Leave a comment in the, info box, in the comment box below and I can make a video about that one as well. But this is just about traveling. The dogs always have their own travel bag. For now I have it packed for one dog, usually Obviously, I carry for both of my dog's stuff in here, but yeah, I don't think it is very useful to put everything inside here twice and show you all the things twice. So um, this is just for one dog, but I will pack it for both when we are really leaving out. So in random order, I just picked it up and um, put everything nicely in the bag. What I have in here is a little sort of a brain game for your dog. Some dogs can struggle a little bit with settling in vacation homes and because everything is new, new smells, they're just not used to staying in unfamiliar places. Then it's always nice to have a little thing with them because this always calls them down. This is a, a, they can keep their brain occupied and it calms them down. So it's always really nice to have something small like this with you. Obviously, your dog's own bowls food and water bowl and do not forget to bring your uh, dog's own food and uh, that's very important because you cannot get your food everywhere in Europe probably or wherever you are traveling to uh, it's not good to keep your dog changing on food so it's not good to change all of a sudden when you are on vacation to another food uh, exceptions are there of course because for example we are going on summer vacation to Germany Max her food comes from Germany so if I'm running out of food in the week before we are going on vacation. I do not have to worry about that one. I just go to the pet store in Germany because Max her food comes from Germany. We go to Germany to buy it there. So um, I do not have to worry about that one, but Ravi is very sensitive on food. So I always have to make sure that I have enough food for him with me. So bowls, always very important to have. When you are staying at a property that belongs to somebody else, I think it's very important to treat that property like it is your own and make sure that if you know that your dog at home sleeps on the sofa or on the couch make sure that you check beforehand if your dog's allowed on the uh, holiday home and i always check that and usually they say yeah sure that's fine and then i always make sure that i bring enough blankets to cover up all the furniture and even if your dog's not allowed on there then i cover it up anyway because you never know if they for example jump on there when you're not seeing them for just a split second or if your uh, dog is losing a lot of hair and he's walking against the furniture that that it just stays clean and it's also very important to take your own dog bed so this is just a little one but just take a look on what your dog sleeps in at home or on at home depending on what your dog likes and take that with you along on vacation uh, when you're going by car that shouldn't be a problem but you're keeping the uh, property clean and your dog has a familiar place to stay on that also helps them to settling down in order to keep the property clean make sure that you do have enough towels with you small big whatever kind of need it just make sure that you have enough with it with you we always have more than enough and if you have a washing machine at the property that you have booked well then it probably shouldn't be needed to bring a dozen of towels but if you are not make sure that you have enough of them and I also always have a bathing rope for the dogs with me. So whenever they got wet from the rain or in 
an exception they do need a bath i can cover them up they can dry and everything will stay nice and clean I always take a long leash it's usually about 10 or 20 meters and i think that is really important especially in countries where dogs are not allowed off leash and you would like to give your dogs a little bit more, more a little bit more room to roam around so then a long leash comes in handy i really like the biotane ones i always bring all different kind of leashes they have their standard leash that um, they use here when we are just walking around the block they have the flexi leash for the, the hikings that we are doing and these always come in handy or when they would like to go swim or something then you can easily use these and I always have an extra harness for them. They obviously, they wear their normal harnesses when we are just having the regular walks out on the property and uh, just for an evening walk, morning walk, stuff like that. And uh, for really hiking stuff, then I always bring their so-called mountain harnesses, especially when we are going to the mountains. <laughs> so I always have an extra harness for them. I made a review about this one a few months ago i will link that down in the info box below they are by roughware and those are the harnesses that we always carry along for when we are doing the really hiking or backpacking and make sure that always is attached to the harness or the collar i do not recommend the collar in the mountains but always make sure that there is a tag on that with your phone number and always a case of an emergency number um, you can add the address of the property where you are living but we are so much spending time abroad that I have to buy hundreds of tags with every address from every place that we are staying. So what I always do, I have my phone number on it, on it, and I have my mom's phone number on it. So in case I'm just out there with Ravi alone and something is happening, I always have made notice on that tag with uh, ICE. That uh, means in case of an emergency and they know that shortcut everywhere in the world. So if you make sure that that is added to it, then when emergency services is helping you out and you are not able to talk to them, then they know who to call. So that's always a very good have in hand. And that's most of the extra gear that I'm bringing. Now I will go through some stuff that I bring in regards to taking care of the dogs. So usually if we are on vacation, we do not have, let the dogs have a bath. It's not necessary, but there are always exceptions. Your dog can roll in something really bad or for whatever kind of reason your dog might need a bath. So I always have a bottle of shampoo with me. I always have a brush with me. I have this spray with me that is against ticks. Enough poopy bags, of course never are too low on that one some paw bomb and i always have this little thing with me it is a little roller and it has a sort of sticky layer on it so in case every, anything at the property is covered in dog hair you can easily roll this over and it will take all the hair off but in my opinion it's always better to uh, avoid that than having to fix that later so therefore we always have this in hand so those are the things that i have with me in regards to care products um my first aid kit like i mentioned but that's always in the uh, day pack for when we are out on the trail but do not forget to take that one next up is food well i already mentioned the normal food of your dog that you should be aware of that one but i always bring a whole array of snacks extras and stuff like that um, i have always something to chew on for the dogs chewing also calms them down so it's nice after a day of hiking or just when you're having a day of doing nothing that your dog can chew around a little bit i have all different kind of snacks with me so I rather have way too much on those than way too less. If you are traveling to a country that you know, you obviously can go to the pet store, but I will always make sure that I have enough on that one. I always bring some toppings. Those are for their normal food, but sometimes dogs can struggle a little bit when eating, when they are not at home. Max can sometimes do that as well. And obviously it is something nice extra as well i mean we treat ourselves on vacation as well why not do that with your dogs either this for example is beef liver with cranberries and this is chicken liver with carrots and that's just a little addition to add over that normal food also some extra calories if you're doing a lot of hiking and usually i take some extra liquid things like bone broth 
little back so that you can hydrate your dog a little bit more and give them a little bit more of a kick for the inside because they usually snack a little bit more when they are on vacation uh, things that they do not know and then it's always good to give them something to keep their gut in a good shape as well and what i always have on hand is a ziploc bag full of all kinds of treats as you can see the all famous beef steaks that the dogs always have at the end of the day the liquid snacks that they like so much energy bars uh, meat uh, sausages or meat rolls that i can give them a little bit of extra or when we are going to visit a town for example there are always a lot of impressions for the dogs to, to cope with and it's busy and all they see is legs and food so it's always good to have an extra special treat on hand so then for example i use these let me show you This is just um, chicken with cheese, so I cut it up in little pieces and have that in the treat bag with me that I always carry along so that I can always pick out some little snacks just throughout the day or when we are running out of snacks in the day pack or backpack so then I can always stock up on that one as well. And the last thing that I have in here is always a bag of wet wipes. These are just from uh, for babies. You can take, they are specially made for pets, but these will work fine. Make sure that you take one with no perfumes in it, no alcohol in it, so then they are fine to use for your pet as well. So yeah, that is practically everything that's in the bag. So this is what we are taking along when we are traveling abroad with Max and Ravi. Like I mentioned, everything or practically everything double, like those snacks they can share, food um, related, those those topping things they can share. Uh, tick spray, I only need one shampoo. So, But their bathing suit there, an extra towel, the harnesses, of course, long leashes, bring them for two dogs. And if you are having more dogs, make sure that every dog has their own set of gear so they all have a relaxing vacation as well. So yeah, this is what worked for us turned out throughout the years that we are able to work fine with this one. This is all that we need. And usually that is, can you call it a bad habit? I don't know, it's just a habit of mine that wherever we go, I always search on the internet for pet stores because I'm always curious to see what is being sold in different countries. And then I'm getting some snacks over there and see if I can find anything new that's, that's useful, that we can use for backpacking or hiking. And um, yeah, then we can store up on things, stock up on things. and. Uh, yeah, well, I think it is really nice to take your dogs along traveling. Some people may find it daunting. They say, if you take your dog, you can't do anything. If you are willing to, you can do everything. If you see what we are doing on our vacations and where we have been sleeping, our dogs have been sleeping from those simple hiker huts up to castles. And if you simply ask it and make sure that in advance, you make clear to the owners that you are a responsible dog owner and that you do a little bit of research on where dogs are allowed, dogs are not allowed, um, then you're having an awesome vacation with your dogs. And I absolutely do not feel limited when we are having the dogs with you. So um, some people say you cannot go out for dinner, you cannot visit museums, you cannot go shopping. Our experience is that in practically every country you can, and if there is a specific store where your dogs are not allowed, then wait for each other then one goes in first the other stays with the dogs and after that you change it's not that hard but you have just willing to make that adjustments to your dog and we are taking the dogs for years and sometimes we had one dog with us at the high point we had four dogs with us and it never has any problems or it never felt like a limitation to me it always is a great addition i will never ever leave my dogs at home and there are two persons in my life that I would trust my dog to, except for my mom, because when we're on vacation, my mom's with me. But that's a former colleague of mine, and that's a friend of us. And I will trust those, but I will never, ever leave my dog in a, um, how do you call that in English? I don't know exactly. It's called a pension. So you're leaving your dog there, and they're all in cages, and um, they are let out once or twice a day and getting practically no attention some people say there are good ones but i worked at once and i was done there very quickly because i saw how bad um owners were lied to that they said oh the dogs are getting this attention and they are being walked that often today nothing of that was true so i would never have a nice vacation if my dogs were not with me i was would be worrying all day about them so for us it's just normal that they are there and um, if it is not for you it might be new we started with it one day as well if you have any questions, always feel free to ask me in the comment box below and I would be happy to help you out. If you would like to know anything more specific about any country and you're not sure how to find it on the internet, I will be happy to help you out as well because I would 
I'd like to say that I think that everyone deserves and practically every dog deserves it to go with their humans on vacation as well because they appreciate the quality time with you as well. And there are always some exceptions with like with everything. Some dogs cannot cope with vacation. And if you notice that your dog can't, don't bring your dog along. Make sure that you have a good alternative that it can stay with family or with friends or with your neighbors if you have a good connection with your neighbors. But do not force your dog. Some dogs really struggle. They have stress. They do not eat. They just do not feel well when they are not at home. So make sure that your dog that you know your dog in regards to that and if your dog does like it like ours do then you're going to have a great time together so if you like this video give us a like subscribe to the channel and notify the alarm bell and then as always enjoy the outdoors we will catch you on the next trail in this case our summer vacation goodbye